This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Motivation is a big deal to us. Search for it on YouTube and you get thousands upon thousands of results. Motivational speeches, motivational soundtracks, get motivated with me, etc, etc. It's something we all want more of, but for some reason can never seem to grasp. Before I go into why I think that is and how you can change that, what even is motivation? Totally stolen from Wikipedia, motivation is the reason for people's actions, willingness or goals. The word comes from a different word, motive, which is defined as a need that requires satisfaction. I've always thought of motive as simply the reason for doing something, but this definition somehow seems much more fitting. So it's not only the reason we do the thing, it's also the reason behind the reason we want to do the thing. In a way it's very complex, and in other ways it's pure animalistic instinct. It's also intensely personal. Some people dream about a Terence Fletcher type to yell at them until they work harder, while some are more motivated by kindness and gentle encouragement. The trick, I think, is to figure out your source. To take those stupid reptilian brain impulses and shape them into something tangible that you can aim for every day. By first understanding, we can use it to our advantage and start making motivation work for us instead of sitting around and waiting for it to help us. To understand though, we must first look at motivation itself and the different ways it manifests itself in our heads. In my experience as a freelancer, there are two types of motivation, which I've decided to define by two painfully non-scholarly terms. There's short-term explosive motivation and long-term enduring motivation. The first is fleeting, based on external elements. Rewards if you complete the task, punishment if you don't, and inspiring YouTube video, etc. It can be powerful and it feels great, but it tends to fade once instant gratification is not met or the deadline is up. Much too often people lean on this for a source of their work. How many times have you heard or said yourself, I want to draw but I'm just not motivated. I should be writing but I'm not feeling inspired. This type of motivation can certainly be controlled to a point you can purposefully do and consume media that inspires you and motivates you, but at the end of the day it will fade away. The second type of motivation is much more rooted in our innermost thoughts and feelings, our long-term goals and inner drive. A self-desire driven by the enjoyment of the task itself and the want to improve and challenge oneself. The key to succeeding in anything that requires years of training is that long-term inner motivation. It's a steady burn of energy, pushing you forward through thick and thin, and most people have this desire inside themselves, for one topic or another. It's their passion, but sometimes it needs to be trained to really shine. Through learning, self-improvement, and mental well-being, this drive can be strengthened. When I first set out to make this video, I thought of these as good and bad motivation, but the truth is that neither is inherently good or bad. Explosive motivation is great when it's there, but we cannot rely on it. If we do, we would end up working one day a week and we would never get anything done. There's a relatively famous saying that the difference between an amateur and a professional is that the professional will get up and do the work even if they're feeling like it or not. And I think that's partially true, although it does possibly give a bit too much credit to the professional. But the point is that this external motivation is great, it feels great and it's powerful. But if you start relying on it, then you will never really get anything done. That being said, working is obviously much more pleasant when we actually want to work. So now that we've got our bases covered, let's talk about how we can take that steady motivation, often seen as an elusive mystical force, and mold it to suit our needs. A big misconception and common issue when it comes to motivation is sitting around waiting for it to strike so you can get to work. Going through hours of motivational videos on YouTube, just trying to get yourself pumped up to go to work. And it's important to realize that motivation often is the result of action and not the cause of it. To probably misquote Newton's law of physics, objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Once a task has begun, continuing on is rather simple, or in fact somewhat instinctive. When you hop out of bed and immediately make it, you've performed one tiny task and you feel a slight sense of accomplishment. 
it wasn't a big effort, but now your brain wants more dopamine and so you feel motivated to take on more tasks. By starting early, you've set the stage for the rest of the day. If you lie in bed for two hours, checking social media, then roll out and into your morning robe and maybe you grab some coffee before you plant yourself on the couch, you're setting yourself up for a day where you don't really feel like getting anything done. So we can look at this in the small scale that is a single day, but it also applies to long-term productivity. Drawing every day when you've already been at it for two years is a cakewalk, but drawing every day when you've merely done it for three days is far more difficult. The biggest hurdle we need to overcome is simply starting. After the first step is completed, we'll more often than not feel compelled to continue on. And this is why making getting started easy is paramount. Step one for this is making sure your workspace is accessible. If you eliminate the resistance of, I want to get to work but my laptop is at the bottom of my bag and my desk is full of half empty cups, the barrier to entry is much lower. Always clear your desk the night before you're supposed to get to work, set your tablet out and prepare any documents or equipment you might need. If your workspace is clean and inviting, sitting down and getting to work is much more tempting. Another thing that often hinders us is decision making. Sometimes we spend so much time thinking about when or how we're going to do the thing that we end up never actually doing the thing. Eliminate this procrastination by writing to-do lists ahead of time and setting schedules. This eliminates any guesswork or planning on the fly and lets you focus on your task with more clarity. Instead of spending time thinking about when you're going to draw next, you can just look in your schedule and find the answer. Instead of sitting down at your desk in the morning thinking, huh, where do I start? You can get out your to-do list and jump right into it. One more way to make starting low effort is establishing small rituals that get you in the mood to work. A small action that tells your brain it's time to do the thing. This might sound gimmicky, but it's actually super effective. I never even realized it before researching for this video, but I've been doing two rituals before work for years. Before I sit down to draw, the first thing I always do is grab a huge glass of water and set it on my desk. This may sound like a normal small thing, but it subconsciously tells me I'm going to sit there until that glass is empty, and it also saves me from sitting down and having to get up 10 minutes later because I'm thirsty. The second thing I do once I've sat down is tie my bangs up in a bun so it doesn't get in my face while I work. By performing these two tiny actions, I've not only told myself it's time to work without actually doing anything strenuous, but I've also ensured that I won't be distracted by thirst or having to go on a 30 minute search looking for a hairband because my hair is annoying me. These are all fantastic ways to eliminate procrastination and sitting around paralyzed because your short term motivation has left you. It's important to make yourself accountable for the work you do and implementing simple measures to make doing the thing easier. These coupled with a healthy dose of discipline will make completing tasks and keeping momentum easier. Even though it's important though, I'm keeping this section short because this will only take you so far. A lot of us can stick to this type of a routine for a while, but after a few weeks it can start to dwindle and then suddenly you're back where you started. It's like when you stick going to the gym every day for three weeks and then you slip up one day and just never go back again. How can this happen and why does it happen? To make motivation stick long term, you need to have something that drives you. Some big overarching desire that takes importance over most other things in your life. An undying hunger to make something happen. This internal self-desire that we briefly discussed earlier. One of the reasons making things like getting up at 4am every day stick is so difficult is that there's usually no deep desire behind it. Maybe you saw a motivational YouTube video about how someone started getting up early and changed their life and you're like, that sounds good, I want to do the thing too. You haven't been feeling your best recently, so this seems like a good way to change it. So you feel inspired and pumped up and you start doing the thing, in this case waking up at 4am, and maybe you pull it off for one or two weeks. Maybe it actually does make you feel amazing too. 
but then one day you stay up late binging the case against Adnan Syed and then you feel weird about it. So you go on Reddit and look up what they left out and then you spend two hours researching timelines and libidity and diamond shaped objects and the color of grass and then you look up and suddenly it's 3.30 in the morning. Oh. Oh no. You obviously end up sleeping past 4am the next day and the next and the next. And then, as if your period of productivity never even happened, you're back to your old habits. The reason it's so easy to fall into this trap, I think, is because your source of motivation is something pretty superficial. You do have a need inside you to be better, but your ultimate motivation needs to be based on a deep reflection within yourself and not an external nudge. External nudges are effective and they feel great, but they fade pretty quickly. And I don't think this is necessarily a bad thing, you know, I often watch painting process videos or browse art station in the morning for a boost of motivation. This helps me get momentarily inspired and can push me over the edge into actually painting if I'm having a bad day, but it is not enough to make me paint every day, no matter what. The point is that anyone can stick to good habits for a while, but to stick to them your entire life, you need something deeper some internal desire that's based on you and your life and not some YouTube video or book. The previously mentioned methods can help you get started with work every day, but to actually do the thing every day, the next part is essential. You need to have a reason for doing it. You must have a need that must be satisfied, and the thing is what you can do to satisfy it. The satisfaction of the need is the goal, and that is of utmost importance. To figure out your thing, you need to answer three questions. First of all, what is your end game? What is it you want to achieve? Like the great Bobby Chiu says, what is your ultimate artistic goal? Find the need you must satisfy and solidify that as a tangible thing to aim for. Once you figure it out, I would advise you not to share this goal with anyone. Keep it sacred and don't let anyone tell you it's not a good goal. Ultimately, you know what's important to you, and if there's one thing that shouldn't be influenced by others, it's this. Motivations are the most effective when they are deeply personal and thought through, so don't dilute yourself. I would also encourage you to really think about what it is you want. Many aspiring artists say, I want to get a job at Blizzard, or I just want to work on blockbuster movies, without really giving much thought into what exactly that means for their day-to-day -day life. Achieving these types of things is typically accepted as quote-unquote making it, but working on AAA games is not the only valid career goal if you're an artist. If hosting your own gallery shows and selling traditional paintings would bring you more joy, aim for that. If you want to tell a story through a webcomic, go for it. Nothing is off limits and most importantly, nothing is invalid. Whatever stokes that fire inside you and makes you feel excited, that's what you should aim for. Pick a goal that will take years and years to achieve, but make sure it's actually achievable. And remember, you can always change your goal or raise the stakes if needed. It's not enough just to have a goal though, you also need to know the reason. You know, it's kind of all right there in the words. Uh, the key to getting motivation to stick long term is to have a strong motivation behind your goals. So why would you like to achieve this thing? What is your need? For example, let's say your goal is to make a comfortable living of your art. That's all well and good, but if you don't solidify and remind yourself of why, it might turn into an empty pursuit of simply seeing higher numbers in your bank account, and you'll gradually start to lose your drive and become jaded as you progress slower. If you change that goal into, I want to make a comfortable living of my art, so I can have the freedom to create without financial stress, that goal becomes much more powerful. The last and arguably most important part of setting goals is the how. This is what separates the dream from the plan. So now that you have your goal, you know why you want to achieve this goal, it's time to figure out realistic ways to actually get there. Research the thing you're aiming for heavily and listen intently to those who have achieved it before you. Break the process into smaller stages and tasks as to not overwhelm yourself. With a huge goal, these smaller ones could each take years, which is fine so long as they're manageable. It's also vital to reflect on the methods you are choosing and to make sure they come from an honest place. 
if we go by the previous example, making a good living off your art, there are two ways to frame the how. Number one, I need to finish three commissions a week to make enough for rent, food and savings. And option two, I need to get better at art so I can not only do work I'm proud of, but so I can eventually raise my rates and be comfortable without being on the hamster wheel 24 seven. By choosing methods that are actually rewarding and not just soul draining, you will stay motivated for much longer and it'll also be easier for you to focus on the things that are important. More than anything, this video is a reminder to myself and hopefully to some of you to remember our goals and why we're even doing all this in the first place. Because through hardships, financial stress and mental illness, it's very easy to forget. I've talked a lot now about how one shouldn't rely on motivation or inspiration and how you need a healthy dose of discipline to get anywhere in life. But it's undeniable that everything is much more pleasant when we remember our goals. And not just goals like I need to make rent this month or I need to do this thing to keep my job, but fun goals and goals that mean more to us than pure survival. They will ultimately take us further too and help us get out of bed in the morning when times are hard. I personally like to keep my goals written out on notes on the wall in my office so I can look at them every day, but that's not enough. It's important to set aside some time to really think about them, think about why you have them and how you're doing. If you feel unmotivated yourself, take this opportunity to set aside a moment to refocus. Turn off YouTube, walk away from your computer and or phone and sit in silence for an hour while you think about why you are where you are in life, where you want to go, why you want to go there and how you can get there faster. It's so easy to get lost in this hectic world and get wrapped up with the wrong things. We are constantly bombarded with so much information and so many bad news and so much brainless media that it's easy to just get stuck in that and caught up and kind of forget yourself in all of it. So to get motivated and to really stay that way, you need to have a certain clarity inside yourself. And that clarity will in turn fuel your drive and self-sustain your motivation. Because the goal of all this is to shape your motivation so much you don't really have to think about it after a while. So if you can really clarify that desire you have, you can then start to self-sustain it. I know it's hard, <laughs> believe me I do, uh, but everything is much easier when you have a clear focus inside yourself and something to aim for. So I hope that this video gave you some explosive motivation to go explore your inner motivations and goals, because the biggest trick to motivation I've come to realize is to use the two types in conjuncture with each other. And to do this, your inner goals need to be figured out first, acting as a baseline for your motivations. You can visualize this as a fire in your chest, always burning, but sometimes stronger and sometimes weaker. It's completely natural for this to fluctuate through hard times and great times. But the point is that it's always there burning. But then, since you have that inside you, you can use external elements to stoke your flame. Feeling a bit low? Slap a motivational YouTube video on there, or an inspiring book, or whatever. By considering your long-term motivation first, the external elements will act as a boost, but once they fade away, you will still have some fire left carrying you forwards. And that's how to make motivation stick. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online learning platform with tens of thousands of classes relating to business, art and productivity. I feel like I say this in every single video, but it's true. Continuous learning is one of the biggest deterrents for motivational slumps and low creativity levels. And Skillshare makes learning so easy. Classes in a multitude of subjects are easily accessible. You can download courses on your phone for learning on the go if you're busy or offline. And at less than $10 a month, an annual subscription is very affordable. If you want to learn more and improve yourself, Skillshare is giving the first 500 people who click the link below two months of Skillshare Premium for free. 